traders, my name's Ray, better known as Samurai Trader, and I love day trading. My job is to teach you how to day trade the world's best trading strategies, no matter which market you trade, futures, forex, or stocks. We use exactly the same principles, rules, and strategies. So as we get underway, I really encourage you to take notes because we're gonna cover a lot of great strategies and ideas in today's session. So in today's session, we're going to be focused on trading the micro ES, the MES. However, as I mentioned, you apply the exact same principles to any market and we'll be focusing on tick charts. So let's get moving. Get this underway, here we go. So understanding the risk, there is a risk in trading. You are watching the recording, so please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer. Now, as we get underway, a very, very quick advertisement. Now, if you're a new or experienced trader, now is the time to get serious with the trading. For $197, and you can visit my website to get a really good in-depth view of my program, you receive 15 of the world's best day trading strategy, over 200 hours of online video instruct, uh, instruction. Uh, there's um, literally, as my members describe it, it's a gold mine of information. Make no mistake traders, this is a $10,000 program for only $197 and it includes my free indicators for most trading platforms. And if you've got a platform that I don't generally support, I give you the indicator settings anyway, but there's one more thing I wanna show you here. I have over 200 traders attend my live coaching sessions every month. I do two sessions a week, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, they attend my sessions for a reason. Uh, normally, you can attend these sessions for only 97 a month, but I'm including one month of free sessions. And if you can't attend live, uh, they, um, uh, are recorded so you can watch them at any time. So you receive the entire Day Traders Fast Track program and there is literally hundreds of pages. There's, oh, and now, by the way, there's over 30 PowerPoints, comprehensive PowerPoints of all of the setups, dozens of videos. Anyway, I won't go on and on, but you can obtain all of this, including the coaching for only $197. Now you can, the link is below, so you can join, or if you've received the email, the link to join is also in the email. Let's now get into it. So in today's session, we're going to be focusing on tick charts. Now, a tick chart draws a new bar or candle after a set number of trades, irrespective of the number of contracts are traded in that time period. So unlike Renko charts that are created using range or price movement, the tick value I use with the ES is different to the MES and it's different to what we would use on Renko. Now I should really explain what I mean by this. If you're trading the ES contract, the big contract, which is $12.50 a tick, the micro, the MES, is only $1.25 a tick. It's 10% of the value. But what you also have is a lower volume or number of contracts are traded on the MES. Hence, what I'm about to show you, the tick values or the size of the charts that we use will be lower or smaller than what we trade on the ES. And you'll see that uh, on a chart in a moment. Now. When it comes to trading, there are three main trading sessions because the micro ES and the ES and many of the futures contracts are open up to 23 hours a day. So there are really three main trading sessions. We have the New York session, which uh, then closes at around uh, 5 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Standard, opens at 6 p.m. Then we roll into the Asian, that is the Asian session then, and it's also what we call the Globex session, which then rolls over into London. For an example, I'm recording this at 17.27, 5.27 p.m. Australian time. So what we'll have now is the London market has been open for around 27 minutes, what we call the main London session. And Germany opened a little over an hour and a half ago. Now, 
the reason this is really important is this can affect the speed of the market, the stops and targets and the time that we spend in a trade. So these are really important factors that a trader must learn. The next thing that a trader must learn is based upon the volume of the day, it'll really dictate to us to a degree on the size of a tick chart. For an example, on the MES on this day, it turned over 1.1, nearly 1.2 million contracts. The next day, it only turned over 632,000, about half of that. Now, the reason that can affect your trading is that you may choose to use a smaller time frame. And there's a little formula that we use for that. And it, it can make a very big difference to your trading. Now, uh, a lot of traders now will base their chart time frame around Fibonacci numbers. And so how we come up with a fib, fib number is one plus two equals three. Two plus three, uh, three equals five. Five plus three equals eight, and so on. Now, it's very important that traders learn how to use their entry chart, their trading chart, and how to refer to a higher time frame, what we call an anchor chart. And I'm going to be showing you that in this session. Now, when it comes to trading, the micro ES in a slower market, during the after hours market, the EC, which is the entry chart, you might use an 89 tick. Now, at times like today, uh, you could have easily jumped up to a 144. And as we head into New York, we will definitely be up there at a 233. Now, the anchor chart time frame that I use is approximately three times higher. Do you have to use FIB numbers? No, we've got a number of professional traders that just like to round them up. You might use a 300 tick and three times that is 900. The bottom line with any time frame in any market that we trade is a tradable. Okay, if it's ticking away that, that quickly, and unless you've got an office right next to the exchange, you're gonna get massive slippage, etc. The time frame needs to be tradable. And what I tend to find with the micros, one of the massive benefits you've got with the micros is you can have a much larger stop loss than what you would say on the big contract because your stops are smaller, your tick value is less. But don't be fooled by the size of a tick value. And many of you have already seen this. Now, first of all, it's so important as a trader that you have a target, that you have a goal. Now, it's also important that when you set a goal, you also need to create the supporting beliefs, beliefs that yes, you can do this. Yes, you can learn this. Yes, you can master that. Uh, or this, how to trade, and that is my job. There's a couple of things I can't give you, and that is screen time, the amount of time that you get in front of the screen, patience is another thing, and discipline. They're things that you need to really work on. But I wanna show you this. In this particular case, I'm saying, okay, if you started off with a $1,700 account, now I know that they say you can trade the micros with much less, but there are challenges with that. We need to remember our risk, which is absolutely critical, because we never ever risk, ever risk any more than 2%. Now what that means is 2% of 1,700 is $34. So you never wanna have a risk of any more than that. Now realistically, our typical risk on what I'm about to show you is around $30 a trade. And of course you can make it smaller, you can have a lower risk, have a smaller stop loss, but there are some challenges with that. So just stay with me on what I'm recommending to you today. Now, what if you go for a target of $50 a day? I'm gonna show you how to do that. What it means to you is this, if you start off with 1,700 and every time you double your account, that is every time you receive, you, you earn another 1,700, you leave all your money in there, you start trading your second contract. When you've got another 1,700, you start trading three. But bottom line is, and it really comes down to the magic of compounding, you have a potential of earning up to 10,000 a week in only uh, 30 weeks. Now you may turn around and say, well, hang on, that also means by then I'm trading 44 micro contracts. 
Not quite, because once you start to get above 10 to 20 micros, remember a micro is 10% of the value of a big contract, that is when you consider jumping up and trading a big contract. Now, very quickly, what if I go for $75 a day? And once again, I'm gonna show you how to do that today. You can be up to 10,000 a week in 19 weeks. The same rules apply. And just one more, and actually I might have even taken it out. I think I did. Um, I did take out the 100 a day for the full-time traders that are going to be trading full-time. I think it works out to be, you can be doing that in 13 weeks. So here's our core principle behind what I want to get across to you is number one, we want to be trading in the direction of the higher time frame. In fact, I'll show you how we actually trade using two anchor charts. We've got an entry and two anchor charts. Now, when you first start trading, you start off, and this little red line represents your entry chart. And you have one anchor chart, as you master that, where you own trading with the higher time frame and, and your entry chart, you can then introduce the third chart, okay? But once you get that down pat. So as I say to all traders, you really need to treat this as, a, as really a 60 to 90 day internship to really master the art of trading. Unfortunately, one of the curses that traders have, they want to do it all overnight. And the great thing about it, about trading is it's not, rocket science, it truly isn't. And you know, traders have got to learn to stop focusing on the individual trade, and this is a very important thing. Anything can happen, can happen with one trade. You can have a perfect setup, and someone with, a, someone with a fat finger on the other side of the world can press the wrong button and stop you out of a beautiful trade. It was a beautiful setup. You can actually have perfect losing trades where they met all of the rules. We think in probabilities of 20, but anyway, more on that later. So let's now go to the tick chart. So what I've got here is a 233 tick chart. And then I've got uh, over here, on the right, I've got my anchor chart one and anchor chart two. I'll just give you a general idea of trading with uh, these and what, then we'll expand it just down to one chart. Now, do not be fooled by this. You may look at this initially and say, wow, this is complicated. Traders, it's a little bit like learning how to drive a stick shift. All right, first you get in, I've got to push the clutch, look in the rear vision mirror, change the gears, use the brake and the indicator, and I've got to learn all this. Within 30 days, you've got this down. But what I want you to, want to really do is really show you how important having high time frames are. So, this is 8.31 a.m. Central Standard, which is 9.30. So this is the open of the New York session. So generally speaking, the first five to 10 minutes, I'm not a big fan in trading at that time, right? I call it the killing field. We've got to be very, very careful of that time frame. Now come around 10 minutes later, we're starting to get a beautiful, what we call fanning of the EMAs. Now note here, we've got four, sorry, my apologies, five EMAs. The blue line we call the trigger line, and the gold EMA is a 34, and we call this follow the gold. If you are a pure price action trader, you can trade purely using the uh, EMAs. If you like to have an added confirmation, you can use the indicators. The indicators are very important for me for divergence trades, which I'll quickly show you how to do this today. So now if we come to here, right there I've got a classic 34B. Now, as far as stop losses go, we can see on the right here that this is one point. Now, one point uh, on the micro ES is $5. There are four ticks to a point. Now, remembering we want to be net net after commissions, really $75 to $100 a day. Now, let me just take this one just here. All right, so just here, I've got an entry and let's be super conservative and let's trade using a slingshot trade. Now, this is a two smooth stochastic. 
Uh, you can use, and most of my traders just use the standard stochastic and it does exactly the same thing. Now see the white candles here? These are what we call the super scalper. Now that move from there down to there is, is about three points, which is $15. Nothing to get really excited about, but once you take your commission off, okay, we're looking at around, let's just say around $14. So not a big earn on it. So we come down here. So let me just start show you over to the right what we're looking at just there. And in a moment, I'm also gonna show you how to do it without looking at this. Cause at the moment you can be sitting back and saying, well, right at the moment you're just showing this, you can see what's happening. But I'll show you the essential skill that you need to master in reading from the right hand side. Now we then rally up here and we now have just here, what we call a 34B again, and it's a slingshot. And now we form a nice little double bottom. Now see this double bottom here, and right there, this is what we call divergence. And I've got a perfect setup right there. Now, this is what I want you to notice. See how we've got divergence here. Now this is what I call a platinum um, uh, MACD. All right, so it's a custom one. If you've got TradeStation or need to trade, I've got this if I've coded already for you. If it's any other platform, there is a special setting we use to set any MACD to model this exactly. Now notice over here, we've also got that little double bottom on the anchor chart. But note here, we've then got divergence there as well. Now when we've got divergence there and there, that's a double whammy, that's a double D, we wanna go for that, okay? And we go long here and up we go. Now what I want you to notice here is the relationship between the EMAs that we use. Note the bounce here, note the bounce here, and with an extreme high probability, we are about to have another bounce up here. Now this is a 200 EMA. The more often we come back and test that, the more likely we are is to have a change in market direction. So we need to be very aware of it. It doesn't happen all the time, but eventually, if you keep coming back and having a deep pullback, you will um, have a change. Now, the relationship between the EMAs on each time frame, we use exactly the same lengths on every time frame we trade. So the same lengths that we use on your entry chart, we use on the higher time frames. Now, when you have an EMA bounce on your entry chart, say at the 200, almost certainly you are having an EMA bounce on your anchor charts. Now, one of the questions is, how do we pick up the home runs, the big moves? Okay, that's nice, $15, but how do we pick these up, the $30 moves? When you've got a strong trend on your anchor charts, and there's a way we pick that, and you get an EMA bounce on your anchor charts, now is the time to go for your home runs. And we call those two Bs. We're bouncing, and let me just show you on this one. Note here how I'm bouncing right here, and note that we're bouncing here. That is what we call a 2B. In fact, it's a 3B. This is what you're looking at. See right there, 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 and there. You're bouncing on three um, time frames. Just two of those. Now let's look at that there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's be conservative. Now that's $30. You only need two of those a day. Now before you skeptics start throwing rubbish at me and say, no, oh, it's easy to pick, just stay with me. Stop thinking of the individual trade. We pick in batches of things. Now I've retraced here. I've now got another bounce. And so I'm now going to short again. Now let me just show you this. Up here, up we go. And we're just looking for a reversal candle here. So now I've got a reversal. I've got, make sure we're on the right spot here. I've got a reversal, whoops, just didn't want to show that, but I've got a reversal here. Reversal here, let's go for another Nice move, bang, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, 
there we go again. Okay, so we can we're trading these deeper pullbacks now. Very important with these um, divergence trades. When you first start trading, you do not trade divergence trades, okay? Because there's an extra skill set. Unfortunately, so many traders uh, really want to try to pick uh, tops and bottoms in the market. You start by mastering trading with the trend. You start getting these 10, 15, 20, 30 dollar scalps in the market. You're on your $100 a day. But unfortunately, traders, um, uh, so many traders, they want to start, you know, trading all the tops and bottoms, yet they're not consistently profitable. So now I've got another 2B just here. Now remember, we've also got a break even when we go to break even on these. Now, now I've got a reversal, not quite an ABC, but I've got a reversal. I'm now pulling back, I'm pulling back, I'm waiting for my white paint. There we go. Now I've got an entry again. Okay, so now I'm shorting again and down I go. Now I've come down and I've got what we call a pivot bounce. So let me just pull this one on. Let's just go to this anchor chart here. Two, let's go down to the pivot, bang. So what we've now got here is a pivot bounce. So when we have a pivot bounce, uh, and let's just see if we get divergence. We don't have any divergence here. Let me just come down here. And now I want to make sure I've got the right spot here. This is very, very important. So note here we've got virtually no divergence. No divert, but on my anchor chart two, I now have divergence. And this is what we call a 1DA. Now, tick charts are actually harder to learn how to day trade on than what Renko charts are, by the way. So if you watch many of my other videos, I, I, we, we mainly trade Renko, but we refer to tick because there are certain patterns that appear on tick charts you won't get on Renko. Renko is beautiful for smoothing out the price action, but it can hide a lot of important information. So where's my entry? My entry is not until I get a close above my trigger line just here. And so what I'm, the reason I'm going to take this long is no divergence, no divergence. However, I've got divergence on my highest time frame. Now, traders, which do you think has the most say or the most power in a trade? The divergence on the lowest time frame, middle or highest, on the highest. So when we have divergence, uh, a one or what we call a 2D, we go, we target either the cyan or the 200. Okay, so let's just see how we go. Now, my, our stop, and I should, sorry, my apologies, my stop goes a few ticks below this little swing low. So I've got a fairly tight stop. It's only a, probably about a $15, $20 stop just here. But I want to ideally get up to this sort of level up here. All right, now note this pattern that's starting to set up. See how my EMAs are now starting to cross. We've tested the 200 a number of times. Now, the more often, as I mentioned, we go back and test the 200, the more likely we are to get a change in market direction. However, it may only be short-lived, and the reason is this. Note on the right-hand side, look at the strength of the downtrend just here. Okay, see that there? Let's see what happens on this chart when we get up here. Let's just look here. Bang. See how once again, and watch, we'll probably bounce off the 200 here. Just watch this. Bang. And we get another. Now, I should really point out here, the entries, remember, are right off this particular time frame, off our entry chart. Okay, now we turn over and remember you're trading off this time frame just here. Okay, now this is what we call a 200 overshoot. Okay, now look at the trend here and let's just see what happens. Once again, I need to have divergence because the reason I need divergence right now and this does not count. I've only got a little, let me just see this here. We've only got a little, no, let me actually say, we might have taken this right here. And if I did, I'm going to get stopped. I'm going to have a stop out right there. 
but now I get a secondary entry. So I just lost 15 to 20 dollars just there. Let me just um, be because I had a, for, my experience members know we had what we call a T12 just there. So we would have been stopped. But now we've got another short and away we go. Now let me go across and just show you another little technique here to keep you in these runners. Okay, and it's a technique that um, uh, Jake Bernstein has been teaching for many, many years. And Jake's been in the business for over 55 years now. And so what I've got here is, um, uh, we call it the 8 cross 8, the 8 X8, just here. Right, so see the white dots here and the blue? So how it works is, when our white dots are under, we're looking for long trades. When the white dots are above our trigger line here, we're looking for shorts. Now, as always, and as Jake would openly say as well, this particular strategy we use uh, in a strong trending market. There are certain markets where you've got to be very careful with this because you'll get chopped up. But let me just give you an idea here. So down here, we had a really nice little potential divergence trade just there. Where's my entry? My entry is on the first dot that's below the trigger line, which is just there. And by the way, this strategy you can set up on any time frame. I'll give you all the settings for this. There's no magic indicators to buy, okay? Um, you set these up with standard indicators. And so we end up here. Here is my buy. Now we come up here and here is my exit. So that was only a $15, probably a $15 trade. Here is my re-entry, my stop is here and bang, I come all the way up and I would probably exit just there and there is a re-entry. Now as with all trading, there are certain things that we need to be aware of and this is where the coaching comes into it. Look over here, see this traders, how we've now got a really solid downtrend on our higher time frame. When you have these overshoots, time and time again, you're about to get a bounce on a higher time frame. What we're actually doing here is buying into this, which is resistance. So you've got to be very careful. Now, if you also want to pick up these runners, See here, you enter using your signal on your lower time frame and you stay in that all the way up until there. See how finally, just there, my dots now change direction. See just here, right there. What that means is you can pick up these runners and this is a probably, what's that? Let's just take that high, that's a 13. Let me just um, take it to um, this low of 13. Hang on, sorry, let me just start get to the right figures there. But uh, it's 13 and up there, and so I'm just gonna try to um, 13, that's to say a seven point move. Now that's a $35 move there. Then we roll over. What makes this a high probability trade? It is this. Remember that diagram that we had earlier and let me just pull this back up again. This is very, very important traders that we do look at this. Remember this. An actual fact, just by coincidence, there, there is an almost identical setup right there. See our higher time frame, in this particular case, our higher time frame is actually, it's not identical, <laughs> it's coming down. Okay, but we've got an overshoot and now we're going to trade back in the direction of that higher time frame. So going back to this chart here, okay, what is the direction of that higher time frame? It is heading down and as you become more experienced, you're looking at your two anchors, you can see we actually have a very strong downtrend. Now, Jake Bernstein is very, very much about having 100% rules-based strategies. He hates it when an individual has got to, you know, brings personal discretion into it. So where is our entry? 
our entry is the first white dot that appears above the trigger line and our stop goes just above there. So we've got a nice tight stop of about $15. Remember, you don't want to have a really tight stop. You've got to allow for these tails, some wriggle room. So I like to have my stop above there. Where is my exit? My clear cut exit is here. So that was a good two, four, six, a good, and if we take that there, and now, once again, another good $35 move all the way down. Now, we're actually live right now. So let me just go over to here right now. So what we've got here is the Globex session. So this is, um, uh, let me just see there. So I'm just checking my time here. So 7.53, just here. So just going back here. Okay, so we've got, we can see here, where the open uh, of the market uh, up here about the London Open. Now, what I want you to notice is this, and this is where this information trade is, is priceless. See this little 200 EMA overshoot right here. And let me just do one more thing just to cheat here. I say cheat, I'm gonna put my super scalper on here. Let me just do this, just one moment. It's the white paint bar. Now that white paint bar does not appear until that third candle there. But what I want you to notice is this. Look over at Dranker Chart 1. Oh, that's interesting. We're bouncing. And look at your anchor chart 2. Oh, we're bouncing. These are what we call home run moves. Now, if you want to make it really mechanical, your entry was when the white dot crossed under the trigger line, just there. There's your entry. You're in, you're in, you're in, and you're out on that one right there. Okay, so what you've got there is a good, I don't know, one, two, three, another $30, $40, let's just call it a $35 move just there. Now you may be thinking, well, what about this big move just over here? Now remember, we are trading during the globe accession. Now these are what we call, you've got a 34B, 34B, but here, you're in, you're out, you've got another re-entry. Now remember we spoke about divergence, okay? And let me just pull this over. I'm gonna show you as we finish this up, otherwise we'll never get finished here. So let's just have a look at this. Let me scroll that over, let me scroll that over. Okay, so what we've got right here, traders, Let's, here's what you'd be looking at from the far right hand side of the screen, okay? This is what we call a T19. Now all of these terms I'm giving you, there's about 20 odd different setups that you'll learn. For example, you'll learn how to buy into the pivot. You'll learn how to trade the pivot bounces. These are very, very important. All of these you pick up in time, but when you first start trading with me, you really master two setups, two trend following setups called the 34B and the 2B. Once you own them, we then get you to introduce other setups. Now, I'm not gonna insult you because you do need to learn some other things along the way. Okay, now, you know, trading is once again, it's just about, it's about trading patterns. Patterns repeat every day. See this here. See your moving averages here, the EMA, see how they're starting to fan apart. See that there? Look over at your anchor chart there, anchor chart one. See how they're widening all the way here. This is what we call a fanning of the EMAs. Now I've got a T19, a reason to go short at that particular stage. Now, the entry, you could enter right there. See that white dot appears. Now that white dot, you can have to, you can have it appear uh, on that candle or when it closes. Okay, but there is your entry. Okay, and you're going to stay in it until you get a white dot appears under the blue. And I would exit right there. Remember, traders, you can always re-enter. You're out. Now, just looking at that, without scrolling over, 
notice the goal. We are the same, follow the goal. Notice the trigger line is crossed under here. I'm gonna look for another short. Look at my long-term stochastic, we're heading down. And here is, bang, right there. This red candle, see how the, the little white dot is closed above? There is my signal to go short. So traders, you can make trading mechanical, but I also don't want to say that it's easy because you know it's not rocket science, but you need to learn these patterns. And unfortunately, so many traders will watch a YouTube video today and go, oh, this is easy, I'll pick it up in no time. Yes, you can pick it up, but you need to give yourself the screen time and you need to understand how the setups work and what angulation is and how the fanning works. It's not rocket science, okay? It truly isn't. So what I'd like you to really invite you to do here is become a member. Is once again, for $197, and if you go to my website, imadaytrader.com, and have a look at the huge amount of resources. There's a video there and it's it's an old one, it's two years old now. Need to update it, the massive amount of information that you receive with it. There's nothing like it. In fact, some people feel overwhelmed, but remember, I guide you in the coaching sessions where to start. Now, after your first month, it's only $97 a month, but you can cancel. You can say before the end of first month, this is fantastic, Ray, but I don't want to continue with the coaching. So it means your total investment has only been for lifetime access to my program, 197, plus the coaching for one month, and you have lifetime access to those sessions, and you can download them, okay? This is, traders, a $10,000 program. If you're serious about mastering the art of day trading in the shortest time period, whether you're a brand new trader or an experienced trader, there is nothing like this globally. I don't ask for referrals, or I should say, or testimonials. If you go to my website, read what the members have to say. So traders, thank you very much. In the next video, and I should have really um, brought that up here, in the next video, we're going to be discussing how to trade the black gold crude oil. We've got a lot of oil traders in our coaching class. And as I mentioned, we've got around 200 members there and probably about 60 or 70 of them now are full-time traders. And so we, we look at that uh, crude oil every couple of days, we review that. So I'll be discussing in the next session how to trade crude. Thank you traders, I love day trading.